Hello everyone, Phil Rowley here and welcome to my fly tying bench. You know the most underrated stillwater staple out there? The coronamid larva or bloodworm. Yep, nobody likes to fish these skinny little flies, but trout love them. And I'm going to show you Brian Chan's green and red coronamid larva. If you enjoy this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to get notified about future videos, hit the bell. The recipe is listed below along with the tools and materials I use to tie this fly. So come to my vise and let's tie a green and red coronamid larva. Brian Chan's red-green coronamid larva does an excellent job representing perhaps the most underrated stillwater bread and butter food source, coronamid larva or bloodworm. Here are the materials you'll need to tie this great fly. So let's tie the red-green coronamid larva. A great little pattern from good friend Brian Chan can never have enough coronamid larva pattern, the unsung still water staple, that food source that's around all the time, that doesn't get the same glory that leeches and minnow patterns and dragonfly nymphs done. These little simple slender larval patterns really produce, especially in the summer months when trout retreat to deeper water, and that's where lots of coronamid larva inhabit that muddy bottom at depth. So into the jaws of the vise, I've got a Daiichi 1760 number 12, time in as big as a number 10, 12s, 14s, even 16s, probably tied 12s and 14s most often. And then I've slid a red glass bead onto the shank and get these typically at uh, a Michaels or similar craft store and, uh, and there are some commercially made for fly tying. And uh, sometimes you get a good batch with nice holes like this and other times you get ones that tend to bust more than you get them on. There's not a lot of consistency, it would seem, from a fly tying perspective with glass beads. So you just got to soldier through them. So now I'm going to attach the tying thread, which is, in this case, red UTC 70. You could also use some of the MFC 60 or 80 thread. I'm going to get that started. Trim off the excess. And continue down the shank, covering it with a nice thin layer of a thread to provide traction for the rest of the materials we're going to tie on. I'm going to return the thread back up to the rear of the bead where we're going to tie in our ribbing. And this fly has two ribs. So it has a, a super floss and a wire rib. So we're going to put the wire rib in first. Excuse my band-aided thumb from dumping a big boat anchor on it. And we're just going to attach that silver wire right along the near side of the shank and then just secure it down the side right down into the bend careful not to nick that thread on the hook point open turns back up the second rib as I mentioned earlier is red stretch floss or super floss so Lycra based material, Spanflex, lots of different names out there. Sexy floss. So we're just going to attach that in, pull that back a little bit. I'm actually going to go forward just to squeeze that tip in and then wind back. And as I wind back, I am really, once I'm confident I've got this secured, I'm really pulling on it to reduce bulk. And then again, put that into the material clip. And go back a little further. Make sure I've got both the rib and both ribs tied in. And then we're going to whoops, what's that hook point? Come forward. Stop just short of the bead. And for the body, it's flashaboo. And in this case, the color is 6903. I believe it's Kelly Green, but the, the number is more important. Uh, yep, there's the number there, Kelly Green. So I'm just going to take two strands, moisten them to keep them together, 
get them started. And then I'm just going to wind them down the shank. Now normally, you've seen other videos, I coat the the body, the sort of the, the threaded hook with super glue, but because we're using the stretch floss rib, we got to be careful because super glue often doesn't react well, or, or sorry, the stretch floss doesn't react well with the super glue and can um, deteriorate it. So we're just going to have to coat this with uh, um, the finished fly with uh, UV resin. So we're just going down the shank and then we're coming back up. Being careful not to nick, or, nick the uh, flashaboo on the uh, hook point. And again, we're using this return trip as an opportunity to, to fill in any blanks, you know, sort of spaces that we may have uh, created on the way down. And also when we overwrap a material with itself, we actually add some durability to it because it's, if it gets severed, it's got to try and unravel itself. It's like you sitting on a chair and trying to lift your body weight. It's not the easiest thing to do. So we just tie that off couple of wraps over the top, a couple of wraps directly behind, now to lock that in place, trim away the excess, you can throw another couple of wraps in, and now we're going to take our stretch floss, or sexy floss, the red, and with moderate tension, it's just going to wind this ribbing forward, Nice open wraps, not really going for a, a count here. Just going to back that off, I just want to... Just nice even open wraps right up. Couple over top, couple in front. Then I'm going to pull on it to reduce bulk. And trim. And at this point, whenever I'm using stretch floss or stretchy materials, either a half hitch or a two or three turn whip finish, just to lock off those thread wraps. Because what can happen is that stretch floss is obviously under a bit of tension, and if you knock the bobbin accidentally, cause that thread to jump, it'll slip out from underneath the thread wraps, the stretch floss will and uh, everything unravels and you find out that that nice long piece of stretch floss you were using was actually a very short piece in the end and it's very tough you have to be, almost start over again. Now what we're going to do is take our ribbing and trail it. We're going to come up and work that ribbing right in between as neatly as we can right in in behind there as best you can you're trying to get this to trail along the studio lights we got going here I've got lots of reflection so it's actually kind of hard for me to see but uh, at my tying bench at home it's a lot easier because you don't have all this light so again, we're just going to tie that off, a couple over the top, a couple in behind, and just break away the excess. Push that down, and build up a nice little red thorax, if you will, not that the chronomid larva have that, just to finish that off. I've got a little tag of wire sticking up there that's disconcerting. So we'll just continue to build up the thread ramp until that's covered better. Then we're going to take our whip finisher. Can you build that up? Disengage. A little lumpy there, but we'll be fine when we coat it. So the tying portion of the fly is done and now all we've got to do is coat it and we're going to use some of the Solares Bone Dry Ultra Thin UV Resin and just give this a coat.
coating right over the bead to protect it. Make sure that distributes well. I've got a little hair or something stuck to it. And you can just rotate the vise and make sure that that brushes in all over. Gives it that nice shiny look and coats that fly. So we'll just see that from the top there and I'm just going to come in and quickly cure it with the light. And just make sure everything's finished off. There you have it. Not totally happy with the thread wraps behind the bead, but it'll still fish and hunt well. So there you have it. The completed red-green coronamid larva. Give that a try the next time you think bloodworm are on the agenda. Um, this mixed coloration, you often see bloodworm with red-green um, coloration, particularly in the fall months, as the water becomes more oxygenated and the coronamid larva do not need to rely on that hemoglobin that they can generate to live in oxygen poor waters that gives them that distinct red coloration. So there you have it. Add that one to your fly box. For more information on fly fishing and still water fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you will find fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, information regarding my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online still water fly fishing store. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. While you're visiting my site, please join my mailing list to receive my educational newsletters. You can also follow me through my social media channels. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and give this video a like. Please take the time to watch my other videos as well. Thanks for watching.